Good morning and welcome to Manchester and our hotel room. Uh, it's a bit of a mess in here. Don't recall much of what happened last night. Jen's in the shower. Uh, I am surrounded by half-eaten bagels stuffed with peanut butter and almost empty tubs of sports lubricant. Can only mean one thing. Can mean all sorts of things. Today only means one thing. High rocks. Today's video is a good one. All of the footage from my first ever attempt at a high rocks, and if you do CrossFit or obstacle course racing, Spartan, Tough Mudder, stuff like that, if you're a runner, a cyclist, you use the gym, if you've just got an interest in being in shape, whether you're where you wanna be or working to where you wanna be, check this out, because this was the best time I've ever had in a sporting fitness event ever. There are moments I've had in other things I've done, crossing mountains with Nixon on trail runs, or completing the monkey bars and then disappearing back into the forest on a Spartan race, or just getting a PB on a park run. Those were amazing, but nothing has ever ticked so many boxes, one after the other, as this. So here is the plan. I'm gonna go through the video, explain how I did, what I got right, what I got wrong, if there's time, and chat about the day more generally. So don't worry, if you have never heard of High Rocks and have no idea what's involved, all you need to know at this stage, it is an indoor competition based around a one kilometer run followed by a physical challenge repeated eight times. So eight kilometers, eight challenges. And in case you're new to my channel, my background is that I went from very, very fat to not quite so fat by starting to jog in my mid thirties, I'm now 48, and a few years ago started doing OCRs, obstacle course races and trail runs. Over the last year, I've also done a bit of indoor cycling. Ah! Ah! If you're thinking, you don't sound like an elite athlete, well spotted. I'm also six foot six and 100 kilos, so completely the wrong size for obstacle course racing and trail running and cycling. So with those, like anything I have a go at, including this, I always just try and set myself a target of being above average. I first heard of High Rocks properly in December, eight weeks ago, and signed up pretty much just as a means of making sure I didn't eat badly over Christmas and then proceeded to eat badly over Christmas. So this is not something I've spent much time preparing for. I will stick a link to the High Rocks website in the description so you can go and check out events that might be near you. And lastly, I have no affiliation with them at all. I just love what they're doing. Okay, let's go. So while I'm warming up here, this is the Manchester event. All High Rocks events take place in these sort of indoor spaces. This is actually an old railway station, so it's actually a pretty cool building to be in. And the setup for High Rocks is the same every time, anywhere in the world. Same running, same challenges. So I can compare my times here with someone competing in, say, Dallas or Madrid or wherever. It all started in Germany, so it's all very slick and efficient, from registering to check-in to the layout of the place. You could turn up as I did, complete newbie, just follow instructions and not go wrong. Super well organized. So I was running in the 12 noon wave. 11.50, start pen opens, and then I go. And I'm feeling pretty good-ish. It was about a four hour drive to get to Manchester the day before, and then a pretty restless, stressful night, just lots of nerves and anticipation, really. But well, the hotel was only a 30 second walk from the venue, so that was nice. I'd eaten well in advance, peanut butter bagel, and I knew it was gonna be hot and sweaty, so anything that might rub and get sore was well lubricated, so as well prepped as I really could be. Now, High Rocks has a few categories, including teams and pairs events, but the individuals are men and women open and men and women pro. I'll explain the difference in a bit, but I am running in the 45 to 49 age group open men. But in my wave here at 12, it's a mix of open men of any age. So if you're interested in how you're doing versus others your age, you have to wait until afterwards to see the results because they could have already run or they could be going in a later wave. So we're about to start and there are other earlier waves already out on the course. So we're gonna be running out into traffic as it were. You've got to have your wits about you. Everyone's wearing an ankle timing chip. So what I'm gonna do is cover the times for everything as we go. There I go. And that big screen has your laps flash up so you know when you've done your two laps and can then come in for the challenge. I said all High Rocks events are identical. Obviously the logistics of different buildings that they're taking place in means that sometimes there'll be very slight changes to the layout that will then affect how many laps are required for the kilometer to be done. Here, it was just over two and a half. So you go out, go around once, go around again, and then you get in for your challenge. So this, my first kilometer, my plan here, just get under four minutes with an expectation that my later runs would be dropping to near a five minute kilometer pace. It's a bit fiddly, weaving through traffic, but I felt like I was moving quick enough. 
It felt like my park run pace. And then into the first challenge, the ski erg. 10 minutes between waves, so everyone from the wave before us has cleared out of this area. I did wonder actually in advance whether there was ever an issue with there being enough kit, and the answer is no. Not once did I arrive at a challenge station and there wasn't a marshal pointing out an empty spot ready to go. Now, I've only used a ski erg once before, so a bit of a new one for me. Actually, before we talk ski erg, the run times. So, beauty of High Rocks is you can go online and look up every time at every event for every individual challenge ever, and then you can rank them and see where you fit, or see what to beat next time to better your own times. So, at Manchester, open category, men, 476 people. In my 45 to 49 age group, 30 people. That first run was a 3 minute 40. As you'd expect, it was my fastest of all the eight laps, and only your fastest lap gets ranked against others. So for that, I was fastest in my age group and 26th overall. So not a bad start. Back to the ski erg. So all I'm doing here is trying to keep a pace similar to the guy next to me. I can look across and see his screen. I have no idea what a quick pace is on these things, but I can see what he's doing, and he seems to be whizzing along. He'd come into this zone, only guy ahead of me in my way from the run, and now he's not in my age group, but as someone that was shifting on the run myself, I figured, well, he can't be slow, and so I'm just using him to pace myself. Now, the ski went okay. I think there's probably a bit of technique to this that I'm lacking, but even so, did a four minute 10, which was joint third in my age, 109th overall, and then out and on to run two. First lap, second run. As Jenna says, first lap of my second run, and still feeling good. Got a four minute 16 for that run. And as Jenna is waiting here for me to get to the second challenge, gotta say, the setup for spectators was awesome. As you can see, Jen could easily bounce from the running track to the main area and just see 99% of what was going on. Compared to an obstacle course race, maybe where you're off in the woods and somebody watching might be just standing around in a field for three or four hours to see you for two minutes at the end. This was brilliant, and the atmosphere that creates, having people right next to you behind the barriers yelling encouragement was brilliant. You can't fail to just get motivated. Now, talking of obstacle course races, the sled push. This is what I was looking forward to, despite only ever having pushed a sled once before, a couple of weeks ago in practice, because it's always frustrated me that the obstacles suiting bigger people on OCRs, the heavy carries and the weighted pulls, are such a small part of the event, so although I do okay at them, it just doesn't really gain me much overall. Here, I thought I might do all right. The guy in the cap has taken me on the run, so I come in here third, again, just in my wave. It's not really relevant other than my own pacing to try and use those around me to work out where I'm at. My objective here was just once I start moving that thing, do not stop until the end. Shout out for Jenna's commentary skills to the point and accurate. I did nail that. Now, I mentioned earlier there is a pro wave, it was later on in the day. This is one of the challenges where the pros differ. So, this sled is 125 kilos plus the sled for the men, a bit lighter for the women, and 50 kilos more for pro men, which is why you can't really compare the times properly between the two. Having said that, the people entering the pro category are such absolute animals that they're often faster despite tougher challenges anyway. So, my sled push result, 1 minute 49. First in my age group, 8th overall. That was a cool time, but man, it smoked my quads. So, my third run was a 5 minute 6. You can see the guy in the cap who I blew past on the sled just casually jogging past me. Getting access to a sled to practice doing it and then going straight into a run definitely something that I need to be doing. Now the sled pull, 75 kilos plus the sled, four lengths again. Now this was an interesting one because although I've never done a pull like this, I assumed I'd do better than I did. I went for a mostly arms only approach to try and rest my legs and that actually worked, but my technique just never felt super comfortable. In fact, the very last length was probably the only one that actually felt good. It almost felt like I'd finally got the hang of it by then. I was pulling across my body for a much greater range of motion rather than just sort of straight towards me. So not a disaster, but I was hauling the thing along thinking this just isn't as easy as I'd hoped. So 3 minutes 46, 7th in age, 62 overall. Not bad, but as a bigger competitor, I just thought I'd have been quicker. So run 4, 4 minutes 48, and then it got mentally and physically tough. This was the challenge I was dreading. I'm too big and too old and too heavy to get up and down for burpee jumps. Just to rub it in, that dude in the cap who I passed again back on the sled pull again back in front. And actually this was the end of me having any idea where people from my individual wave were. Now, I'm just blended in with slower people from earlier waves. You just have no sense of where you're at. 
what I was trying to do was just focus on any random person near me and stay with them. But yeah, just brutal. Also try to conserve energy by getting up and down slow and then doing good leaps. Uh, all I can hear is Jen yelling about doing big jumps. Oh, jump over the line! Jump over the line! I hated it and I loved it because it's what makes the whole event so cool. Somebody will be better at something than you and maybe you'll be better than someone at something else. It is pretty much a perfect blend of strength and endurance, uh, things that are good for smaller people and then things that are good for bigger people and you know, runners might be great on the track but then the gym guys might be better on some of the, the physical challenges. So yeah, despite how tough this was, glad it is one of the events. Having said that, very, very hard and time reflects that. Six minutes 18, 21st in age group, 370 overall. Shockingly bad relative to my other performances up till now. I was actually quite surprised my fifth run following this was a 5.01 because I went into it wasted. My legs were just shaking underneath me. Okay, from worst performance to not too shabby, the one kilometer row. Now I'm not a rower. I've used one about 10 times in the last eight weeks training for this. And before that, not touched one since I was a teenager. And even back then I just mucked about on one in the gym. But physically, I suit a rowing machine. So my plan here was do a nice steady stroke rate so I didn't blow myself up and aim for close to four minutes. And you'll see why in a bit. Now, useful to explain here, the rock zone. When you leave the running track and enter the main arena, the chip on your ankle records that your run has ended and you've entered the rock zone, the arena area. You then find your challenge station and enter that. So here, for example, the minute I came under the banner into the rowing station, the clock starts for the row. It doesn't stop until you leave the rowing station to go back into the rock zone. You can then grab a drink of water at the water area before leaving the rock zone again and starting your next run. So two things, at the end of all this, you get a time for time spent in the rock zone. Before I competed, I was looking at other people's times from previous events and seeing 10, 15 minutes in the rock zone and thinking, what are they doing there? What they're doing is what I was doing, staggering around trying to get to your next challenge and try not to just vomit over the person giving you cups of water. And for the row, it means for four minute time, I have to row quick, because I've got to get on the machine, got to get off the machine, got to get out of the area, all included in the time. And the row did go okay. Come on, 10 meters, run on, go, go, go! That's the one. Run, run! Run! And here, it looks like I'm in a hurry, which is why Jen is yelling at me to run. This was as fast as I could move, just focused on getting out of the rowing station, back into the rock zone, and then just hoping I'd done all right. Because the row was the one I thought I might be pretty good. Three minutes, 57. First in my age group, second overall. And me and the young guy that beat me by two seconds, the only people in open to get under four minutes all day. I knew sub four minute was doable and that not many other people would be getting close to it, but still was so tired when I sat on the machine in the beginning. I had no idea if I was close to, I saw the results. In fact, only seven of the pro athletes got under four minutes as well. And looking on the High Rocks website, for all time rankings, every High Rocks anywhere ever, I'm the only person in my open age group to have ever gone under four minutes. And actually forget age groups. Out of the almost 7,000 times recorded by open men of any age, I'm seventh fastest time, and one guy has two times, so I'm sixth fastest person. So I'm not sure it makes up entirely for doing burpees, like a giant uncoordinated baby, but it was a little mini win within the bigger event. In fact, I often talk on here about how I look for a small victory, even when one isn't obvious overall. When I was really overweight doing park runs in sort of 30 minutes plus, I'd try and be the first really big person, called Mark with a red hat on that day. And I even started running with Nixon so I could be the quickest really big person with a little tiny dog. So if you like that, if you like that idea of mini victories and high rocks and its diversity of events is brilliant because you're always gonna find something that stands out to you as a result. It may be that your run times didn't slow down the way they did at a past event or you got into the top 70% of people your age doing lunges or something. For me, I love the idea of leaving an event and irrespective of how it went as a whole, just be able to think, yeah, that, that bit, that was all right. So back to it, run six, a five minute 10. Could have been a tiny bit quicker, but I wanted to hit the next challenge with good legs. Farmer's carry, two 24 kilo weights, and my plan was to move fast and smooth so that my arms would not need a break. You walk, you're gonna take so long, you're gonna to have to stop and rest your arms. But when you run, the bounce in your shoulders is burning, you're already on fire shoulders and your traps. So you gotta have a balance, and then you just have to dig down and listen to the crowd. Speed. 
Jen there practicing her coaching technique for when she next wants me to bring the shopping in from the car, I think. While I finish that, jumping back to a thing worth noting about the runs, actually about most of the event, but the runs most obviously, there are all sorts of abilities and people out there. I mentioned at the start that my wave wasn't my age group. And part of me did think that that wasn't great because had it been, I could have focused on who those people were a bit more and then actually raced them as such. But because some were younger than me and some were older than me, and within 20 minutes or so, I'd lost all track of who was there anyway, that didn't really work. But where the jumbling up of people works brilliantly is that you can just get lost in running your own race. And for a lot of people, probably most people, that's important. They don't want to feel like they're in an actual race against people. So as I was running along, people went past me, I went past other people, some people were flying along, some people were walking. The only real attention I paid to anybody was if they came past a tiny bit slower, because I then try and use them to sort of keep up with them. So if you're watching this and thinking, oh, I'd be so slow at most of those things, that, that's horrible, it's not for me. Not at all. No matter what your speed on the running or the challenges, no one can really tell what's going on or cares anyway. Just jumping back to the carry for the times, got a one minute 26, missed fastest in my age by one second, eighth overall, not too bad. So anyway, yeah, I'm always very aware of suggesting people go and try something based on my experience, because their experience will clearly be different depending on their own abilities. But here, fast or slow, no one stands out as being that, not really. It really is a good event to do if you're someone that is a bit hesitant about how you think you will look. Because here, even if somebody was looking, which they aren't, they still can't tell anyway. It's just bodies everywhere. Okay, back to running. Did a 501 for run seven before the 20 kilogram lunges. Not as bad as burpees, but another one I don't suit. Up and down is just not my thing. Actually, we missed a six pack there. Good time to point this out. There are a lot of fit people there, but also a lot of normal looking bodies, by which I mean normal. Fat people, thin people, big people, small people. When you first walk in and you see people running past doing their laps, it's easy to think you stumbled onto a Baywatch audition, but don't think you need to look a certain way. There is an almost optical illusion going on where if you see a few amazing bodies in a group, you just think it's a group of amazing bodies, but you take them out and actually you suddenly realize that there's actually just every shape and size represented. Okay, sandbag lunges was four minutes, 45 seconds, 10th in age, 197 overall. And you remember I mentioned the rock zone area between a challenge and going back out to the run? This is me wasting time in it. So when we look at the rock zone time in a bit, most of that time was spent here getting drinks, try not to fall into those bins. And then run eight, a five minute 30, slowest run of all, before the wall balls, 100 reps, six kilo ball, full squat required every rep, just pain from rep one to 100 in your head, it's just get it done, get it over with, but your body is like, no, not gonna do that. I was just shot at this point, trying to do blocks of 10 or 15 in a row, but my form was gone, in fact there was no form left. And it was a brilliant one to finish on because there is nothing you could do afterwards apart from get to the finish line, which you can do as soon as you get past your hundredth rep. Ended up with six minutes, three seconds, 13th in my age group, 213 overall. And all I kept thinking throughout was just get under an hour 20 total. Kept checking my watch because I knew from looking at previous times of people in my age group at other events, something around one hour 20 to one hour 25 was gonna be almost certainly in the top half of runners. Done. Now, before we look at total time, just a couple of stats to wrap up. Total time spent running for all of my eight laps, 38 minutes, 39 seconds. That was 81 out of all the runners. And total time spent in the rock zone, seven minutes, 22. That was 301 out of all runners. And overall total time, one hour, 18 minutes, 10 seconds, which puts me fifth in my age group, 113 overall. So times aside, how was it? Absolutely awesome. That time between one hour and two hours for most people means that you're just pushing hard non-stop. It's not like a marathon where you're out there for three or four hours plus and there's long stretches of time where nothing's really happening. Here, it's constant go. You're thinking about how many laps you got left to run or what your next challenge is gonna be. It just never lets up. 
and every challenge is a doable one. Some are gonna be tough, they're gonna take you a while maybe, but it's not like an obstacle course race where you just might not be able to do maybe monkey bars, just full stop, not gonna happen for you. Here though, you just buckle down and keep grinding till it's over. That's the best sort of challenge, achievable but tough. And massive support from the crowd, marshals were on it every step, never any doubt as to where you should be and when. It can look like organized chaos, but if you can count from one to eight, they will do the rest. What is my target for next time? So my age group, the four times that beat me were roughly between 10 minutes faster and one minute faster than me. It would be amazing to get an age group podium in London in April, which may be hard than I think right now because I think there's gonna be more people racing in London. I can't see how this isn't gonna just take off in terms of numbers, it's just too much fun. But let's assume I need to find between five and 10 minutes. Doable, I think so. Burpees and lunges and wall balls, there's a good three minutes to be saved. I was just way too slow on those. And the rest is gonna be in the running and getting to the running, getting off of a challenge and hustle to the run, not dawdle around the water station. And then on the run, be consistent. Having the fastest first lap in my group was cool, but actually, if I just done four minute 30 laps all the way through, instead of slipping past five, over eight laps, there's a few more minutes. That's where my training's gonna be going, a lot of it at least. Get exhausted and then run. Interestingly, overall fastest open man, one hour three, fastest open female, one hour eight, fastest pro man, 57 minutes, pro woman, one hour 10. Again, pros move in bigger weights. In fact, the pro women move the same weights as the open men. So same sled push I was doing. Okay, hope you found it interesting. As I say, I know I rabbit on a lot about times and place and rank. That's just me. I spent 20 years as a big overweight lump, so I'm sort of playing catch up. But if you think it just looks fun, get along and have a go. I can't think of any event I've done where real fast people run against slower people, just jumbled up, no one can tell, no one cares, everyone just gets out, pushes themselves. Genuinely inspiring to be in a place with so many people just interested in doing their best. All shapes, all sizes, all different backgrounds, lots of very normal looking people doing what most normal people aren't doing, getting off their butts and seeing what they can do. Absolutely brilliant, and has left me inspired to train as well. I mentioned at the very beginning, High Rocks ticks a lot of boxes for me. The big one now is I'm just so motivated to get back to training with some real targets to aim for. Very excited. Right, I should finish off by saying if you're one of the people there on the day who saw me and said cool things about the YouTube channel, thank you very much. When I'm at these things, I'm sometimes a bit nervous and apprehensive, as anybody is, and I don't always look super approachable maybe, but it is brilliant to meet people that enjoy what I'm doing here. So thank you very much if you are one of them. And a shout out obviously to my amazing wife, Jenna, for running around, filming, and then buying me a lot of Burger King on the journey back home. Quite literally, would not have any of this to show you without her. Right, got any questions, any feedback, as always, stick it down below. Like and subscribe if you've not already done so. Oh, and if you're a sports lubricant company, looking to sponsor somebody, get in touch. We rattle through that stuff.